Good morning! Hey. Welcome to Riverside Live Stream! Welcome. Welcome to Riverside News. We hope that you're excited. Riverside what, News! news. Ah. We've been I on for 30 seconds and you've already I've, I've messed. messed. Right, well that's it. I that's call it why. quits now. That's why you're not allowed back Is that why? This is, I was going to say, it's been a while since I've been on. Maybe that's why. They just don't like me on it because I just mess up. No comment. No comment. I can either confirm or deny that. I think last time I was on I was with Mark Bond and we were just talking about music choices and stuff we like. So maybe it's just bored people. No. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. So, <coughs> welcome to the Riverside Live Stream. We're hoping yes. that you're excited to be here. We're really excited to yeah, be here. Honestly, I am. It's so much <laughs> fun. So, um, so yeah. So we've had a pretty exciting weekend last weekend, which it was we great. tell you some things about. Joe, what did we do last weekend? So we, as a young adults group, went to the Big Church Festival, which is a festival in the middle of Ooh. Sussex, uh, with. I think it was about 35,000 other Christians. Oh, uh, and it? It, yeah, I think that's the final total they did over the weekend. was ridiculous. I don't know how they count. I know. Uh, <laughs> just in, two, yeah. one, two, one, two, two three. Maybe wristbands. Skip wristbands a few. Issues. Yeah, yeah. It's tickets. But yeah, it was a really fun weekend. We went as a, as a young adults group with about 17, 18 of us. And yeah, we all camped together, uh, ate together. You know, slept in all the tents, we did the full experience. It was the full experience of camping. It was, it? yeah. I um, hate camping, I will say. It's, it's no awful. No way, no way. You mean that you're not Bear Grylls? I'm not Bear Grylls, I'm pretty useless. Jo I was living on pot noodles for the weekend. Joe was living on pot noodles. We're going to talk about some of the experiences from the Big Church <laughs> Now, my favourite one is is Joe's camping attire. Oh, yeah. Do you want to brief us on so, what went wrong? Obviously, because it's Big Church Festival, I'm in the head. Oh, it's a festival, even though it's a church festival. It's gonna be like I need to wear like cool clothes because everyone's gonna look really cool. So I wore like my floral Hawaiian shirt, nice shorts, and then I wore some socks and sliders. So like they're like flip flops, but they've got a bar that goes all the way over, so you completely encase the foot. Um, and it was the last day, and you know I I went to the big church shop and I bought myself some nice bright white socks, big church socks. They were ten pound. They're quite expensive. A little bit of an indulgence, if oh. I do say. Um, and I was like, you know what? I've just bought these socks. I really want to wear them. So I'm going to go to the last show. And the last show in the evening, it was Matt Redman. Uh, and like we left at like eight o'clock, yeah. which I think is reasonable. We left, left at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. It was sunny. It's quite warm. You know, I'm like in my Hawaiian shirt. Everyone else has got like their coats, and I'm like, why? It's gonna be. It's fine. Like it's not raining. Why are you all in your coats? Um, in my socks and my sliders, my nice white socks. Um, and then soon after the show starts, it, I can only describe it as a heavenly rain because. <laughs> Boy, did it rain down a lot. Yeah, the heavens did open. The heavens yeah. opened. Yeah. I was absolutely dripping. And it, <laughs> the funny bit what was not just the fact that I was wearing socks and sliders and now my feet were wet. Because it's a campsite, obviously, you know, if, like four days after yeah. being on a campsite and it's been raining, it's, it's muddy. quite muddy. Everywhere. And I had to traverse up this hill in socks and sliders. And it's fair to say my nice white big church socks are now a nice tan tinge, a nice brownish tan tinge. Oh, which that's, is, well that's what you want really, you, know, you do want a brown Tie dye, socks. but it's more like mud dye. Yeah. So, the yeah. funniest thing was, is, is when we got back we were like, Jake, why wouldn't you just take your socks off and stop and get ruined? He's like, well, I don't want people to see my toes. But at this point, it was so wet that the socks had become see-through <laughs> and you could see the toes anyway. And honestly, you know when you're like looking, the reason that none of us wore socks and, on, and sliders is because we yeah, had to be called the weather app. <laughs> <laughs> Comes in quite handy when camping. To I, was just, I was just positively affirmed that it wasn't going to rain. And yeah. it's fair to say I regret in faith, that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I absolutely regret that. It well, was so wet. I was so soggy. Are we well, also as well? So there were how many cars? Four cars that went up? Four cars that went up, yeah. Five cars that oh, went yeah, up. Oh, yeah, five. Oh, who did we forget? Um, probably Louis because we went up in, in five cars and on the way up we didn't even see no, one of the drivers. No, honestly, it, it was like it must have been going at least 150 I reckon no. straight down the middle. He, well, it, it was you know like, like transportation in the Bible. I imagine that's what happened to be fair. Because <laughs> we got there a whole like 20 minutes after them. they'd already mm. got their tickets and we had to wait yeah. for a savage yeah. queue. It was so long, up. it's appalling. But it was fun. It I just remember because really I just remember as we were all like Josh was leading to so Josh was leading in the car and he was driving and I was directing him and we'd take a right turn and then you'd see 
Chloe take oh. a right turn and then Alex and Neil take a right turn and yeah. it was really good. We were in unison. Josh was getting quite annoyed. We didn't see PJ or Louis at all because they were just too impatient for us, I believe. They PJ, sped off. PJ's behind us though on the Was PJ behind I us? Was guys. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. PJ. I'm so like, sorry. PJ, PJ is really funny because he's got a yellow mini, if you don't know, and he was driving in front of us and his antenna's like, Whee! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just goes like that. <laughs> and it was just like, what on earth? But the worst thing was, obviously, there's four cars at this point. And every time Josh moves a lane for no reason. Oh, no, you're everybody just doing moves it for fun. Everyone was like. And Chloe was like, what is he doing? <laughs> but we got there alive, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did. We made, it was a really nice journey, especially that coastal road down it in course. And on the way back, we managed to do it in convoy with five of us. Yes, mostly. yes, we did. Yes, obviously, we did. We lost a couple. They made it back eventually. I don't think yeah. that lost a couple. <laughs> they didn't make it back. <laughs> in more room, we'll do that no. at the end. But, <laughs> but we um, we also did a group Spotify session, which is oh. really cool. So we didn't realise you can do it. So you can listen to the same Spotify music as yes. someone else. Yeah. You can put playlists on, and other people can add to it. And you can skip music. And so all of us were listening to the same music on the way back, which is absolutely it hilarious. It was so funny. And what was even funnier is the fact that we get back. And it turns out that Emric, Emric the tech genius, I might add, yeah. um, was, <laughs> thought he was listening to a group Spotify and wasn't, was listening just to his own Spotify. Just listen, yeah. And he was putting all these funny songs on the list and we and then we, were, we had a group chat and he was like, guys, this one's hilarious, isn't it? And we were just like, yeah, because we didn't know oh. what he was talking about. And what was even funnier is he was listening to songs like Call Me Maybe and yeah. absolutely dreadful songs. He was like, thinking we really added them to yeah. the list. And we weren't even in the session, no, so I don't know what he was doing. It was, was all doing. his fault. Yeah. But there were some absolute classics. Have you ever heard of the song Homegrown Tomatoes by John Denver? Oh, uh, It was so good. Alex Neal on the country songs <sighs> came in thick and fast. It's all right, but do you know when you've got like a pop song and like you're bringing the energy and then you've got Woo! some guy talking about growing homegrown tomatoes <laughs> or living off sweet corn and he's like, there's nothing but corn grows here. And, Amen. you know, it's a prophetic <laughs> it, really, it really was uh, perfect, not prophetic. <laughs> it was right, but yeah, it was quite muddy as well, though, wasn't it? There, mm. um, what yeah. was one of the things that happened in the mud? Oh, PJ, PJ did an amazing PJ. mud slide, which I want to, I think we've got a video, but I can't, I don't think it's working. Is it not working, PJ? No, no, we no, could no. try and get it on here. Let's see if oh, we can Jerome. try and get it on. You can so see, you get to see all the lovely really, photos that we've taken. We're really hard in worship. That uh, is the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> right, Joe, right let's see if we can find it, the mate. video of PJ. Look at all these photos. These Joe are all took great. Many absolutely uh, yeah, a couple of photos. selfies. I think that we should stop Joe from taking photos, really. I think it's a public disservice. It, honestly. I don't think oh, you've got a single go, nice one of me. No, I've got one nice one of you. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I want to see if we can find this video of Mr. Clay sliding because it is absolutely incredible. There's a lot of close-ups of people. Yeah, there's so. a lot of selfies from me as well, which I don't usually take selfies. Here we go. Right, go. let's see if we can get it up. Right, is everyone? Can everyone see that? How's that? Go big screen. Beach, beach, oh, go big screen. Beach, beach, beach. So, if you can't see, that is all mud, effectively. And what PJ did is he ran jumped and just absolutely just decked it in front of the main stage and it's fair to say there he is there, he is. there we will get the action shot oh no. <laughs> this is Banfo <laughs> right that's just me this sticker oh, oh we've got to we've got to talk about this right we've got to talk about these now okay. if you can't see that because it's quite small but it's uh, an inflatable football yeah. and right before right before the Matt Redman the last show I don't know what was going through their heads, but they go, let's release about 25 of these be giant, giant inflatable balls. balls. Yeah. They are beach balls. And they just foot start foot throwing them out in front of the crowd. And it's, it's all fun and games, everyone's hitting it up. But after about two minutes, it's like, it's people, honestly like it's Hunger Games. It's like WWE, honestly, yeah, it's last like man standing. People pushing children, up and smoking it and then... Children sobbing. I told them to chin the face. <laughs> yeah, PJ so, pushed over an old lady. That, that's not a joke as well. Thing as well. PJ went for a header and he jumped, he, ran, he put his arm up, he went like that. And there was an old lady, he just pushed her in the back. He, he was very sorry after. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she was as well. <laughs> she she, she was. couldn't stand up again. <laughs> but the thing is, he was sitting next to this guy and he just thought, we have no idea who this person is. And if you're watching, 
we're really sorry. Mm. But but literally, he bought this brand new Big Church Day Out merch umbrella, and um, and he was just <laughs> holding it up, and then all of a sudden, this beach ball like literally like plummets on it, and it just like crumbles, crumbles. and it was just Absolutely like crumbles. he just spent like twenty five pound on this umbrella, and literally like, the first twenty minutes, <laughs> it was broken. It's a goner. It was broken. Right, so we are going to go to our intro video. Yeah, uh, it's been great yeah, to talk enjoyed. to you. I will see you in a few minutes. Bye. Welcome, welcome. Live welcome. Stream. We were just welcome. so excited. Also, welcome. if you're watching from Brazil, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day happy in Brazil Valentine's to all my Brazilian Valentines. Yeah. Up there. Which is not. To all of them. <laughs> to all of them. Happy Valentine's Day. But it is a really exciting day today. We have got a dedication coming yes, up. Yes, amazing. So keep your eyes amazing. peeled. And what we're going to do is we're going to launch straight into worship. Amazing. With wonderful man. Get, get yourselves ready for some worship. Woo! -hoo. Go team. Go. Go.
amazing. That was so good. That was great. It? It was Honestly. So good. Should we pray together, church? Absolutely. Yeah, Father God, we just want to say thank you. We thank you that you are moving today. We thank you that you are here, that you are present with us, Jesus. And we just pray that as we move into, into the rest of the program, would you just come in ways that we've never experienced you before? We pray for a fresh encounter of the Holy Spirit. We pray for energy. We pray for mm -hmm. fun in your presence today, Father God. We pray yeah. as we as we look to commit Joey Bond into your hands, Jesus. Yeah. We pray your blessing over them. We pray for us as a church family to be united and to be just to stand alongside the family, just champion them in prayer. Mm -hmm. God, we love you so much and we are so excited for what it is that you're going to do. In yeah. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amazing. Amen. Amen. Woo Amazing. Guys, I thought that was so good, wasn't it? That was great. We just like hopped out of the studio, went and yeah. sat in the back, and it, honestly, it's it, just the great energy. It is. Everyone and clapping. It's absolutely packed. It's today, packed. Which honestly, is so many seats. It's so of, great like, to see. Yeah. Everyone's panicking. Like, we need more seats. Get more seats in. That, but that is the best time to panic to have a church. Honestly, yeah. yeah. You can never complain Where about not having that? enough seats. Amen. That is a great thing to Amen. complain about. Definitely. Uh, so what we're going to do is we are going to go to Riverside News. Riverside News and find the girls. Find out what's going on. Bro. Hi, my name's Caitlin. And my name is Magda. And, and this is Riverside News. If this is your first time here in Riverside Church, we want to give you a huge welcome. Yes. Um, feel free to speak to one of us here to just get connected with us, guys. We would love to get to know you a bit better. <laughs> I just like to do these things that never get some fun one every time. So yesterday we had a really great message, church, and we just want to thank everyone who got involved with that and helped make that happen. And a few things coming up are today after the service, we have got our missions lunch, which is going to be in the cafe. So do come along and stay behind for that. On Wednesday, we've got Alpha, as usual. It's going to be great. Got a bit of food going on, a bit of chats about Jesus. What more could you want? And then on the 23rd of June, we've got Riverside Academy, 7.30pm. That'll be in the cafe as well, so do come along. And it'll also be on Zoom, so if you can't make it in person, do join the Zoom. And now we have a date for your diary. Well, Caitlin, <laughs> what do you have for us? <laughs> cafe heroes. It's every other week. Okay. And the next theme is music. Amazing. Cafe Heroes <laughs> is every other week. The next one is actually this Thursday. Yes. And this is for anyone, maybe you're retired, maybe kind of like over 60s, and maybe the more mature ones in the community. Mm -hmm. This is for you guys, a special people. one for you guys. The wise, the wise people, mm -hmm. that is true. So do come along. Um, it's going to be great. Bring your favourite song. Yeah. Favourite music. What's your favourite song, Max? Uh any songs sung by you <laughs> that is the right answer look at that yeah do come along with your favorite song have a little sing song yes i'm sure angela would love to see you there if you have any questions speak to her sadly that is the end of this week's suicide news yes. but i've got a riddle for you Ooh, ending yeah. it a bit differently yeah. yeah interesting so what has 88 keys but can't open any doors it's a piano oh 88 keys Oh, that's actually super smart. It's alright, isn't it? Anyways, I hope that left you uh, thinking about that one. See you next week, guys. Bye. Amazing. Thank you, girls. Amazing. Thank you. Good Always job. do a great job, they do. Lots, Lots of things. exciting news happening. Amazing. Um, so, today, after the service, they might have mentioned we do have our missions on. So, if you great. are around or if you just like to come in, we have uh, Pastor Rachel sharing about Cam yes. Rwanda, which is a project we're looking to partner with, Amazing. which is really exciting. So, bring your own lunch and um, we'll meet you after the service. Yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah, it should be good. We've also, it's quite interesting, we get the opportunity to be involved with the food bank a lot. Yeah, and they are currently so putting out a call out for tinned and canned vegetables at the minute. There seems to be a, just a general shortage at the food bank. Um, so if you have got any spares, we know everyone, like yeah. I went through the other day and I had a look and I've got so many like old soups that like, yeah. definitely are coming close to the expiry date. But yeah, just bring them into the building. We've got a little box and a food bank tin that you can just drop it in. Yeah. Um, anything's appreciated, but yeah, please, please just Put hands in pockets, let's let's yeah. do it. Let's yeah. help the community. And yeah, and obviously like we said, we are a church that's focused on mission both globally, the mission yeah. front and locally and as well. So it's a really good opportunity yeah. to invest back in. And also this Tuesday evening we have Rob Parsons joining us. Woo Great, amazing. I think Rob Parsons is care for the family. 
Yes. I think well, I might just make that up. It's either Care for the Family or Home for Good. It's one of, it's an organisation that's doing amazing work. Um, yes. But he's speaking on healthy communication in families. Great, um, and there are tickets online available and it's going to be here at Riverside. So if you are interested, it's Tuesday evening. Um, and Rob Parsons is an exceptional community. Yes, I've heard so he's he's really, incredible. really good. Um, if you're there, I'll be there. I'm, I'm not sure really what to expect, but I'm really excited. No, it's, it's just great. Really good. So keep an open mind. Yeah. 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 Um, we're also putting a call out for Spree, so if you don't know about Spree, Spree. it is a effectively primary school aged camp that's going on at the back end of June this month uh, and they are in desperate need of volunteers, yeah. so in whatever way you can serve will just mean so much. Uh, I mean, I'm no expert, but they've got me, I think I'm on a DJing shift, yeah. so Woo. we're looking to tunes by Joe Harris, it's going to be a, a blast. Um, but yeah, that is going to be great. So please sign up. Uh, just search for Spree, Spree so Southwest. Spree or, or message Chloe because Chloe, Chloe, Chloe will be yeah, so Chloe will organising be able to that. So that'd be really good. Yeah, and amazing. also as well, guys, it's very exciting. I think Anne Marie and Rich are watching today. But happy 34 years! 34 Woo! years! Wow! 34! 34! Another 34! Yeah! Woo! 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 <laughs> We just want to say that we absolutely love you guys. Yeah, we, honestly. It is just an incredible testimony to the church, to your family, yeah. um, and to us as well, just to see your marriage just That's flourishing so honestly, well. Honestly, for and 34 so we just, amazing yeah, years. Yes, so we I want know. to say enjoy Croatia. I think you were in Venice the other day. Yeah, absolutely I'm exceptional. Jealous. Absolutely loved it. We love you and we miss you. We hope you have an amazing time. But Great. yeah, happy 34 years. Brilliant. We are now going to go back into the main service because we're going to go with the dedication of Joey Bond. So amazing. please stay tuned for that. by the way, you won't distract me. Tie them to your hands, wrap them around the head on your forehead as a reminder, write them on the doorposts of your house. Basically, the words of God are really important in the family life, and we build ourselves on those words. And in the New Testament, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 66 says, everyone who heard about John the Baptist, they said this, it's a great phrase, I wonder what this child will turn out to be. For the hand of the Lord is surely upon him in a special way. Dedication is about that moment when we all go, I wonder what Joey's going to turn out to be. So I think we should invite the Bond family up to come and join us in. Let's give them a round of applause. Come on down. Stand over. Okay. Wow. Woohoo. Gets nervous. Yeah, you know, the older a child gets going to be dedicated, the more difficult it is to handle on this. But anything could happen, that's fine. We're really comfortable with that. And Mark and Emily are here just to stand before you, just to make some declarations to dedicate uh, Joey to God. You know, we receive children as a gift, and then we present them back to God and say, God, thank you for the gift. We're going to do what we can to grow them up in the ways of God. And there's some commitments. And we're joined by the super mature older brother, Toby Bond. <laughs> now, no one to put, kind of put it up, but you, you're kind of this role model that Joey has, you know, and, uh, and, and good and bad, you know, he's gonna uh, look into that, you know, to what are you like, isn't it? It's eight years ago, my Facebook flashed up uh, with an image of um, Toby, who was a little bit younger, and I, w I was there holding him when he was born, and so his birthday was this week, is that right? You, I think you had your pants on, <laughs> so I think you did, so I don't tend to, to hold naked children in my hands, just to let you know. <clears throat> we can't control anything, is it? Don't worry, we can edit that out for the, uh, for, for the after feed, isn't it? So as parents, you've got a responsibility before God to be faithful. 
to him and to his teachings. You've got a responsibility to be great examples to your children, and you are that. And we want to really just endorse you as parents in leading out your kids in such an exemplary way. You're already doing that. But it also is a responsibility for you to teach children, if that's all right. So I'm going to ask you questions. They're not really hard to do, um, by the way, but if you answer, then just answer in the right sense. So today, Mark and Emily are here because they wish to raise their children uh, and both of them, but you know, we're doing Jerry in particular today in his relationship. So do you do come today acknowledging Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Great, fantastic. And do you wish to lead Jerry in his relationship with God through your example of faith and love? We do, isn't it? And do you give Jerry into his loving care, his faithful protection and compassionate guidance of Father God? Great, isn't it? What about you as well? Toby, you with that as well? Get back to me <laughs> on that. <laughs> so the responsibility of raising children, by the way, is not just with the parents. Uh, there is an African phrase that says it takes a village to raise a child. And what that actually means is it takes a community to be great role models to the raising up of Jerry, isn't it? You know? And so we are really growing in that. And so the responsibility we take. So church, I'm going to ask you a question. Will you help these parents and the families to be good examples to the children? Will you pray for Jerry uh, and Mark and Emily? And will you do all that you can to help them grow in their relationship with God and come to know him for himself? If you want to do that, I'm going to ask you to do that by standing to your feet and showing your support. Thank you, church. And we have in particular, we do elect certain people sometimes to take key roles in being spiritual guardians, uh, to guide Jerry and to be their provider. And we know a couple of all doing that. So we're going to invite John and Angela come and join us as that as well when we do this. If that's all right. So if you can stand here, I will just squeeze in there. And then just as you're and we're going to pray for Jerry and the Bond family. Ooh. <laughs> and for me, for Hila. Just to put your hands towards them, and uh, we're going to ask you to pray if that's all right. Heavenly Father God, we just thank you so much for the gift of Joseph and continued gift of Toby into this loving family. Father God, we pray that the joy of worship that uh, Joey just displayed, Lord God, dancing before you, will remain with him all the days of his life. Yes. And Father God, we pray as he grows, he will know more and more of you. And Lord God, will step into all the plans and purposes you have for him. And Father God, we pray for this entire family, Lord God, yeah. mm. that your love yeah. and, and just Lord, your the complete joy and laughter mm. and peace will just fill this home every day. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Fantastic. Right, what we're going to do now, Jerry, we're going to pray for you if that's all right. I've got a little bit of oil, right? It's special oil because it says it's from Jerusalem, but I'm not too worried about that. But what it is, it's just a, a little sign of the Holy Spirit that we're going to pray for you. Right, ready? I'm just going to do a little mark. Doop, doop. So Jerry is one of these children that the, the psychologist would be watching because he's been born and grown in the early life through the, the pandemic. And there's an interesting thing. But when we pray, we pray that actually nothing negative will, will hold him back. But actually we're going to pray something even bigger for Jerry. If that's all right. So we pray in the name of Jesus, your Holy Spirit, to rest on Jerry that he would defeat all expectations of people say, because of that, this will happen. And we don't believe that. We pray you come out in confidence and joy and in laughter and jubilation and in intelligence and in influence, that you would lead and stand out amongst your peers because you know God and God lives in you and guides you and protects you every day of your life. We thank you for him. We rejoice for the Bond family and with them today. And we give you glory. Amen. Amen. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Toby gets some flowers. <laughs> Fantastic. We're going to go back into another song. We're going to take our tithes and offerings this morning. Um, if you are a taxpayer and you tithe into the church, don't forget your envelopes. If you're not yet um, gift aiding, 
on the back out there, there are some forms to fill in, and the government love to give us 25p for every pound. So it's a great way of supporting the kingdom of God. So we're going to stand and worship together. The kids and youth are going to go out to their programs during this song. So you will head towards that. You will see a leader of some description going that way, and you're going to head towards the back. Fantastic.
I'm just going to spend a few minutes just talking for a little while, uh, just to kind of get a grasp of what we're doing. Love dedication service, love the moment and the celebration of family. And if you have your Bibles, turn with me. Oh, just need to flick my notes around because I'm on a different page because of the dedication section. So just entertain yourself. Stay here. Here we go. 1 Kings and chapter 19 and verse 9. So just to give you a little bit of background, I'm going to talk a little bit about the story of Elijah and Elisha. Uh, It's an Old Testament story, and if you don't know much about the Bible, it's okay. I'm going to help you understand that Elijah is a big character in the Bible. And he's a big character because he's known as a prophet, which means he's got this ability that God speaks to him on behalf of the whole nation And he has this cool kind of lifestyle of living for God, speaking out for God. But this goes through all sorts of challenges, by the way. And then one big challenge, if you know your Bible story, is a big kind of battle on Mount Carmel of whether God is real or not. And and Elijah comes through that and everybody thinks he's the man of the hour. You know, you ever had those moments in life when everybody's going, woohoo, you know. And then what happens, he has this really great thing where he's right at the top of his world and then he hits a crash point. Everybody ever been through those two moments when you think everything's going well and suddenly the rug's pulled under your feet and then he has a lip quiver moment and he kind of goes to God and goes, you don't understand, everything's falling apart. And then he has this moment where God says, I've got something special for you to do. And this is a great moment and it does speak into what we're doing in dedication in particular when we talk about generations of one generation needs to pass on to the next generation. And I want us to talk about that for a little while, if that's I can. So 1 uh, Kings chapter 19, verse 9 says, Elijah went and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat. He was plowing a field, and there was 12 teams of oxen in the field, and Elisha was plowing with a 12th team. Elijah went over to him, and he threw his cloak over his shoulders, and then he walked away. And Elisha left the oxen standing there. He ran after Elijah and he said, first, let me go and kiss my mum and father. Goodbye. And then I'm going to go with you. Elijah replied, well, go on back. Think about what I've done to you. So Elijah returned to his oxen, slaughtered them. He used the wood and the plow to build a fire and to roast. And then he passed around the meat to the townspeople. They ate. And then he went with Elijah as his assistant. So just to kind of help you understand, if you don't know what's going on, Elijah is a prophet of God. And God has said to Elijah, you need to go and get the next generation ready. And this is the moment that Elijah says, I want you to look at the next generation. We sit within the context of a generation. And there are three phases of life that we sit in. There is that, I want you to talk about, there's a pre-child phase that happens in our life. You might be in a pre-child phase, which means you haven't had children, by the way, just in case you're wondering that. I remember when I met Rachel, there was a pre-child phase that we were there. We've got three children now, but we didn't always have three children. Do you know the difference between those two times and seasons, you know? And it was a different time back in those days. You know, it was lovely, and it was perfect, and it was tidy, and it was uncomplicated. Uh, And then we have what's called the mid-child phase parenting, isn't it? You know, when you arrive in the moment and you bring your wonderful children home, isn't it? If I'm really honest, right, I remember holding each one of them. I didn't have a clue. Well, everybody thinks somehow you've got this downloaded parent gene in you. But dads, can I just be honest? We really go, oh, wow. It's like, and the first thing I do now as like, perhaps a, an older parent with a little bit of experience, I, I'd say to dads, yeah, just stop holding like a rugby ball or a chocolate egg and just bring the thing in closer. It's just a little bit safer, you know, because we just kind of wander around and go, what do I do with this thing in my... And then this post-parenting phase, which is where we go beyond that parenting and we grow up, isn't it? You know, we, we, as we individuals, we outgrow our parents. Put your hand up if you've never been a child. Great, okay, so we're all here, aren't we? We've all got to that post-parenting phase where, do you know when you grow beyond your parents a little bit? It's an awkward time, isn't it? Both for your parent, but a great time for you as an individual. I have to be careful because my mum's here today, so I can't go too deep into that moment. But what I want to do is like this kind of transition that we've got to understand the different phases of life and our, our roles change at each stage. 
you know, and it's kind of something's going on. And if we can grab a vision for multi-generation, we actually understand that every generation needs every generation. And we serve one another in this incredible community. And God calls it family. That's what family is all about because it's there for growing. And I like that scripture I read earlier about John the Baptist, that everyone who heard about John said, I wonder what this child will turn out to be, for the hand of the Lord is surely upon him in the special way. Can I just pause for a moment, because we think about it as some of the elders. What if you're that child that God is speaking about? Think back to your childhood. What if God is saying, I wonder how special and how you're going to turn out to be? Because you know what, as a child, and when we look at our child self, we see ourselves as full of potential. The older we get, it gets difficult because sometimes we might not realize that potential. And there might be a few cracks on the way and some traumas and some ups and downs. And it didn't go the way we expect and we become a bit damaged and then we lose. But I want us to, if I can, I wanted to draw back to that child state of potential in our life for all to get to dream again that you have potential inside of you. And the reason I know that is because God put it there. There is nothing that can stop that potential of God. And if I can do anything, I just want to say you have a purpose for your life. When it comes to children, I kind of, there's a lovely poet song. And I want to quote the poet Miley Cyrus, if that's all right, when it comes in to, you know, well-known poet. I came in like a wrecking ball. Uh, and can I do a little straw poll, if that's all right? If you, if you think that girls are tidier than boys, can you just put your hand up just for a minute? Interesting. Interesting. I don't know whether there's fear in the room now because I've, I asked a gender-based question, but who, do, who thinks boys are tidier than girls? <laughs> interesting. Interesting. So actually, the girls are winning from my perspective. I know you're voting at home. Put your hand up if you don't think it matters between the genders and they're both... There is a messy gene in our family, isn't there? I don't know if that's a genetic thing, you know, and you'd come home, you'd tidy it all up, and that's the thing. And this like whole wrecking ball kind of moment comes, and you're like, what happened? I walked out of the room to put the kettle on, and some like burgled the place in those few moments, you know? Oh, those are the days, and they're still there, by the way, because I've still got one daughter at home, you know, who makes up for all of that. But. <laughs> I am going to get so much stick. Father's Day is coming as well, isn't it? You know, I should have been, I should have been nicer. Shouldn't I? I really should have been. But um, Mark, you've got two boys, which means it's like boy toys central, isn't it? You know, uh, boy toys, um, we, we love things that fire stuff, don't we? You know, I, I would love like a catapult. I, was, I should never have had a catapult. Uh, I could tell you the story. I was nearly arrested. <laughs> for criminal damage, but my mum's here. She doesn't know this story <laughs> in my life. And, um, but, you know, I don't know why we give boys catapults, you know, because they're just cool but lethal, aren't they? And they cause massive damage. But I thought I'd talk today on a catapult as an illustration. Is that okay? So I don't know if we've got pictures behind you, but um, medieval catapults, by the way, are kind of cool stuff because we've seen them in all the films. And like, we've got the big crossbow, you know, there on the bottom left. You know, we've got those big catapults and we see them being wound up and we put the huge rock in there and it goes... <laughs> and it caused damage. Random fact, right? Absolutely true. The first time a catapult is mentioned in the whole of history is in the Bible. The Bible is the first, which I find is cool as a boy. Right? I find that's really cool because it's like, it feels like God invented catapults right? in, in a mega level, isn't it? So whenever you see the films, you go, oh, that's in the Bible. It's not relevant to what I'm saying, but it is kind of cool. <laughs> But what I want to do, right, I want to just kind of imagine children like this cannonball. I was praying earlier and the team were asking what I was going to preach on today. And they thought I said I was going to preach on the dedication of a human cannibal. But it, it's, it's a human cannon. Ball. I will say it fast, but it's a cannonball. You know the whole thing. I want us to think very simply about this, right? That actually to make a cannonball, you've got to go and dig it out the rock. And then you've got to spend time preparing it. And then there's a purpose for the cannonball. I want to tell you as a small child that God has dug you out of the rock. God has spent time preparing you. You might be still in that phase. And he's preparing you because he wants to launch you into something really exciting.
If you don't remember anything else, just remember, I wonder what that is. Because, you know, the first point of this is we are intended for impact. God designed you to be a wrecking ball. Right? God doesn't worry about the fact that you are going to grow older and wiser and better and more enthusiastic because he says, I want you to go into the world. I want you to make a difference. One of the first things that Jesus did when he arrived on the earth and he started his ministry, he started looking for people. And he bumped into these fishermen with huge callous hands, you know, who weren't in the university today, who weren't the religious scholars. They were just earthy, grounded people who were fishing day out, day out. And he looked at them and he goes, you know what? I've got a plan for your life. I want you to come out of fishing and I want you, and he did this clever thing, rather than fishing for fish, I want you to be able to catch and transform people so that they can live their lives and make a difference too. When Jesus said, follow me, he's saying there's a plan for your life. And as I want to go back to that child state in you that God actually says, I've got a plan for you. There is no one in this room right now or watching at home that does not have a plan that God has set for their life because you're intended for impact. When he says, come follow me, he's just saying, come and listen to me because I'm going to help you understand what your calling is. I'm going to hope, and, and it's not for me to say specifically what that is because God's spirit is able to start drawing on your life and going, it's this, it's this. There is nobody who's retired from the call of God. Because I can tell you what retirement from the call of God looks like. It looks like death and glory. So if you're here, just check your pulse a minute. I'm just, am I still here? If you can feel a little bit of breath, right, okay? That means you've got a call on your life to do something incredible. And I want us to understand that God has intended us to make an impact in our life. And we see these 12 ordinary guys, which most of you, if you're reading the Bible, go, Jesus, there's your first mistake. You just picked 12 guys. That shows you that Jesus will work with anybody. Right, okay, I just want us to understand it's a different world now. We know, and we're all equal, and God is calling us all into that together. But he wants to go, come on, I've got a plan for your life. And that's the start of the journey with Joey, right? God has brought him to this world. He's fearfully and he's wonderfully made. And we're all looking and going, I wonder what he's going to turn out to be. Why? Because God's got a plan. If God's got a plan for Joey's life, you are no different. Because you're in that same phase. But Joey's not going to stay that age, that size. I can tell you that for true. Because if you've ever seen Josh, my oldest, he's now a help here. I don't know what they feed them these days. Do you think there's too many additives in our consumer diet? Because he's just like massive, isn't he? He's huge. Me and Rachel are shorties, you know, and we just don't know what happens. But children grow, and that's largely because God has designed us to grow. And this cannonball that's pulled out of the rock that's done there, he then passes it to the stonemason, and then the guy who says, I want to make a cannonball, can you shape it? Because this is a bit clumpy, and this is a bit sharp on the edges, and that's not going to fly through the air. It needs a time and a season, a period by which it needs smoothing off do you know it takes time to smooth you off isn't it have you noticed that you get a bit more mellow the older you get is that true put your hand up if you feel you get wiser the older you get (laughs) it should be true (laughs) there's a rule in life but we all know if we're really honest old people are not always wise they should be (laughs) <laughs> That's the difference on it. But what is, we go through this process where God is growing us and shaping us and he digs us out of the rock. And, and we go through this. Elijah, by the way, in the story that I've just read, it sounds great. He walks up to Elijah, this new generation, and going, you're the man of the future. It is great. But I love backstories to Elijah because Elijah, as I said, has just gone for an absolute rough time. He's had a death warrant put on his life and he has handled it well. Not many would do, I'm sure. People say, I want to kill you. You know, he's a little bit nervous and he goes on the run and he hides in the desert and he runs from God and he has a bit of a pity party because when things go bad, have you ever had a go at God? Let's be honest, right? I, I like being honest as a Christian because everybody thinks everything's perfect when you've got it. It's not. It's like, God, what are you doing? I'm on my own. There's all these people in church and they just won't listen to me. They would do something but those just and he's having one of these moments and God just before he passes on to the next generation and God actually says to Elijah he said I'm just going to put you in the place and there's these three things and there's this big earthquake and there's this big fire and there's this big storm and there's these big moments in his life you know and it says God wasn't in those big moments and then there's a gentle whisper and he stood on his own after this incredible victory and this incredible low point in his life, and in the whisper, God speaks to him. 
And sometimes we need to stop to hear what God is saying because we forget the destiny that we start the journey with because of the noise or because of the victories or because of what people think about us or because of the trauma or the suffering. And God says to Elijah, I want you to stop. And he positions us and he gets this quiet moment. And I don't know if you noticed, but in that moment, he speaks to Elijah. He says, I want you to go and anoint the next generation. I want you to be a father to the next generation. I want you to pass on what I've given you because I'm not, I never ever intended it just to be about me and you, Elijah. I intended it to be about the family, the next generation. And there's a role I want you to be understand because it's not about you. There's something bigger going on. And it just takes us this moment to pause of all the ups and downs in our life. To take the moment that we are that cannonball that's been pulled out of the rock intended for impact and then we're planned and we're prepared on purpose. Because I don't know if you know, but those rough times, did you know God's smoothing off your rough edges? I can tell you this, I am better as a person because of the trauma, because of the challenges I've gone through. Did you know I'm better because of the mistakes I've made? And that doesn't advocate the mistakes or the damages that happen by those mistakes. I'm better because I have a loving God who helps me grow to reflect, to be forgiven, to get back on my feet and to be stronger as a dad, as a husband, as a leader, as a pastor. And actually I've realized that all of that, all that previous stuff helps me. And it's God just going, shh, shh, I'm smoothing you off. Because we're intended to impact. We're prepared on purpose. And then he wants to take us. And I love this bit when he goes to Elisha. <laughs> and it's the bit, have you seen it crank up in the movies? You know, and it kind of starts to wind up, right? And this is the energy, right? God is putting tension and torsion into your life. Who, who's got tension in their life? It's quite common. It's quite normal for you to go through things that's pushing, right? Tension is not a bad thing. It's pulling you back, okay? So that catapult I showed you earlier, it winds up, and the rope that pulls it back, right? As it tensions, it pulls it, and it pulls it, and it pulls it. It gets tighter. If you take that bow and arrow, and you take the string, and you pull it back, and you pull it back, the string gets tense and tense. And this moment from a physics potential, right, is called potential energy. You have potential energy. You're yet to hit the target. You're yet to be released. But what God is doing in the trauma and in the growth and in the preparation, he's got hold of you. And sometimes you feel held back from this destiny, this call on your life that you think, I'm not hitting it. I'm not realizing it. And God says, just be patient, just with me, just for a little bit longer because I'm pulling you back, not to hold you back because what's gonna happen in a moment? God is going to let go. He's going to take that cannonball. He's going to pop in that thing and go, Aah! and you're going to go shooting into your destiny, right? And that moment when we've seen the human cannonball go, Aah! and God's going to look at that and go, wow, you're flying true. You're flying true because you let me take you out of the quarry. You let me call you. You're flying true because you let me prepare you over those years. You're flying true because you let me put you in that bucket and you let me wind the tension back and you let me shoot you into your eternity because I've got a plan for your life. Did you know Elisha, the young prophet, went on, he became twice as effective as Elijah. There is something glorious about your life and going, I want to invest into the next generation. Jerry resembles something incredibly important to us as a church because one generation will tell of his mighty acts. Our children are there and incredibly important and we want to be good for them. We want to set a God culture. There's some bad things in our society that we need to say, this is not good. Lying, deceit, dishonesty. This is not good culture. This gender kind of battle that we have is if you're a woman, and you can't develop to all that God's called you to be. It's absolute rubbish. We need to remove that from our community and say, go for it. Live your dreams. Live for God. I'm going to be here supporting you every single step of the way, whatever society has put on you to hold you back. This is a community that's going to pull you back and go boom. This is the energy in which we live because this is the spirit of God and what he's designed us for. So, I'm going to take a pause. 
because I speak really fast. And I'm going to ask you just to pray and have a small time of reflection, just to close your eyes, and I'm just going to lead you for a little bit of prayer just to get you to consider something, if that's okay. Maybe you want to ask God a question. God, what have you intended for me? As a child, when I was born, what plans did you have? And as you just sit, I'm just going to pray over you, if that's okay. Holy Spirit, would you reveal what you always intended for our life? If we've lost sight of that because of some of the stuff that's happened in life, would you just fill us again with dreams and those potentials to dream? Would you bring them back? And maybe in your prayer and your reflection, you might want to take a few moments just to talk about where you are now and some of the tough stuff. Is God preparing you for something greater? Is your challenge actually a real positive thing that you're going to come out of this stronger? Have you learned more? Have you just acknowledged your mistakes? Have you come to that point where you perhaps need to ask God for forgiveness? God, would you just remind us again of your sovereignty and your master crafts and ability that you would just remind us that you're shaping us, all of us. And just before I go on to that, take a deep breath now and I just want to ask you to just think about one thing. Do you trust God enough to get in that bucket of that catapult to say, God, I've heard some stuff today that you're inviting me to trust my life to you so that you can shoot me into the future. If, if you do and you feel that, just in your own imagination, just crawl up into that bucket and say, would you just wind it back? Because I want to trust you to say, whatever you got for my life, whatever that dream is you imprinted on me, I'm believing again in it, but I'm also trusting in you to send me to it. And hold yourself there. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray the Holy Spirit would fill you now in act of your faith to be shot forward into the future. And this is a day of significance of new release for you. Amen. I like conversations about what we've heard. So after the service, we're going to kind of have coffee uh, and things like that. It's a good time to meet new people. It's a good time to share a little bit about your story of where you're from and how you've come about. Maybe this, what I've spoke about, is a bit of your story that can help in. And that's how we journey together. And maybe if you want to advance that story after Sunday, you could be confident enough to share kind of text numbers or contact details and go, let's talk about this in the future because that's how we grow as a community. It's not a one-hit message wonder. We're growing together, and um, my battery's gone, so I need to get down. Thank you, Emmerich. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, if you all want to stand up, and we're going to praise the Lord one last time today. Um, the song is Happy Day. I feel like everyone knows that, so feel free to dance, feel free to clap, and just enjoy um, his presence. All right, let's go.
Don't spray. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want yeah. to spray? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Great. <laughs> Do you know what you uh, thank you for an amazing service, God. Um, yeah, we thank you for Joey Bond yeah. and for his dedication. Yeah. Uh, and we pray that as uh, the future happens, can we be supporting that family? Yeah. And Toby and Emily and Mark and especially Joey in yeah. our prayers and our support yeah. and our serving of that family. We just thank you for that. We thank you for Pastor Aaron's message yeah. uh, and we pr just pray that this week we can really receive yeah. that and we can, you know, be prepared to be launched into our mm. communities and made for impact and mm. designed for a purpose. And we thank you for that. Um, Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Woo! Service. What a service, guys! We have oh. had fun. We've had fun at least. Yeah, honestly, I'm, like, I'm a bit sweaty. It's really warm. It is really, warm, so. really warm. There's no air con. There is not a con. But, but on that fun note, that's the end of us. <laughs> that is the end. We'll see you soon. We'll see you next week. <laughs>